All right, guys, this is your Youth Academy guide for FIFA 23. By the end of this video, you'll be confident diving into youth player scouting, knowing what to look for in the quest of the next generation of superstars. Before we plunge ourselves into this world, a subscription to the channel would be amazing. I've built this channel and community around Youth Academy and Regen career modes. I would love for you to join us in FIFA 23 as we take League 2 Stockport County on a memorable journey to Champions League greatness. So the Youth Academy is a super overpowered way of accumulating talent but also overpowered in the fact that it generates so much money from player sales. Due to these two benefits I would say building a successful Youth Academy is vital to a long and prosperous career mode save. Fortunately for us building a mighty Youth Academy system in FIFA 23 is very simple. Unfortunately for players returning from FIFA 22 there are no substantial changes to the Youth Academy. It's un touched like the vast majority of FIFA 23's career mode. Sharing my distaste for this news got me in some serious bother with EA. So remember folks, FIFA 23 is a flawless game that cannot be critiqued in any way, shape or form. <sighs> For this tutorial, we'll need to concentrate on two areas of the main career mode menu. Here, where the Youth Academy Scouts are located, and here, where the Youth Academy Players are located. You'll receive some Youth Academy Players to start off with, but for the purposes of this video and continuity, let's start from nothing and work our way up. So the academy is empty and we need to bring in youth players. This is where the scouts come into play. If we enter the youth scouting section, you'll be greeted by a scout generated as you created the save. This plucky chap will have a star rating similar to your club's quality. So if you're in the lower leagues of England, he's probably not good and you should fire him on the spot. Sorry. It's very self-explanatory this section. The more stars your scouts have, the better chance you have of finding wonder kids. Scouts have two components. Experience, which brings back a higher number of players per monthly report, and judgment, that brings back more quality players per monthly report. So go for the most stars that you can afford. And remember to split the cost over three scouts to maximize the amount of reports you get per month. If you can't afford all three scouts to be five star, five star at the start, be sure to return to this screen and upgrade as soon as you possibly can. Initially, this will eat into your budget, but it's a great investment that will start paying back very quickly. Now, with your scouts ready, it's time to set them assignments. You have a choice of just over 60 countries to choose from. I guess the other 130 or so were deemed not important enough by EA. Again, the longer you send the scouts out, the more expensive it will be. Often the more expensive countries will bring back more quality. But the difference is so negligible that I just suggest you have as much fun as you possibly can. Scouting as many countries as you possibly can. At the bottom of the assignment is the type option. This does change which good and bad attributes the Youth Academy players come back with, but the coding is so poor for most of these types, I would suggest sticking to goalkeeper, that brings you back goalkeepers, physically strong, that brings you back physical monsters that might not have the best technical ability, but grow into the best players thanks to their overall power and dominance, and the any type that will give you the most fun and varied experience. That might not be comprehensive, I know, but trust me when I say, certain types don't bring you back what you ask for and leave you incredibly frustrated. For instance, defensive minded players don't come back with centre backs. FIFA 23 is a flawless game that cannot be critiqued in any way, shape or form. I won't leave you empty handed. If you wish to know, technically gifted will bring back higher ball control and all round technical skill. Winger brings you back more crossing and speed. Playmaker adds higher passing stats. Attacker boost attacking qualities and defensive minded does the same for defending. It's all very straightforward but completely pointless when physically strong brings you back so many beasts that are not limited to a maximum height. They even offer more satisfaction in the long term as you carve them into exactly the player you desire in the exact position you need filling. That to come later. By this point you should have all three scouts assigned. The first report will pop up in your inbox exactly a month from now. 
time to get excited. This is the most daunting part of the process, but can be simplified so much that you won't have to worry at all. When you receive your list of players, you are looking for one thing, the maximum potential of a player circled on screen, the ceiling of this player's career. Please note, this is not the actual potential of a player, but the absolute best the player could be in the view of the scout. The real potential is hidden away, but will always fall within the range shown here. So you should be signing up players who have 90 or above in terms of maximum potential. And that's all that you really need from this screen to build a dynasty. However, there is also a current overall range just to the left and you're trying to aim for players that begin in the 50s or 60s. Opening up more information on a player can give you a better understanding with the valuation. Aim for over £1 million, but be aware defenders and goalkeepers are valued lower. Their value is calculated by their current overall and their current potential. So the higher the price, the more chance the player has of succeeding. This is a very good tip if your youth academy is getting close to capacity and you might be forced to only sign the cream of the crop. But for most cases, you are just looking for the maximum potential. You want to make sure that it is above 90. Heading over to the youth academy section now where all the players you've signed up from your reports will appear with a very clear overall next to their names. Remember, you're looking to start off with 50 to 60 overall players, but on rarer occasions, you do get players in the 40 range that grow exponentially, so don't completely rule them out. My suggestion at this moment is to keep the top players in the academy for as long as possible, until they are ready for football for your team on a regular basis. You can begin judging these players after a few months, when there are more varied results in the potential range. As the months go by, you and your staff members have a greater understanding of a certain player's ability. The players holding low 90 or high 80 max potentials are stars in the making, but dynamic potential could still ruin them due to how poorly it's implemented. Basically, you don't want youth players in your first team reserves for long, or all your hard work up to this point will be wiped out. You will either have to force them into your starting 11 or loan them out. Loaning players removes the dynamic potential, which is super handy. Any players that are stuck in the reserves will have their potential diminished. So if you really want to see them succeed but can't find them room in your starting 11, can't loan them out, then you're sadly forced to sell at this point to save the player from the jaws of dynamic potential. So to recap, keep the player away from dynamic potential for as long as you possibly can. Keeping them in the youth academy works, loaning them works, and playing with them very often at least helps combat it. Dynamic potential can be a good thing that improves the potential of your players, but you have to be so successful as a team, and the average rating of the players has to be high. That's why you see strikers more than any other position improve with dynamic potential, because the rating system rewards attacking players more than defensive players. There are factors that haven't been very well calculated by the developers, so dynamic potential has turned into a fight to preserve what we have, and trying not to chase what you haven't got. FIFA 23 is a flawless video game that cannot be critiqued in any way, shape, or form. Finally, we have development plans, which adds that extra level to physically strong typing, because here you have an immense athlete, but with no real proper understanding of football or positions. You can get hands-on and really carve the blank canvas into anything you wish, and that is the beauty of Physically Strong. If you want a super youth academy, Physically Strong is the go-to for all outfield positions. But if you want variety and more challenge, then you take on the any typing. And with that, you know how to navigate yourself around the youth academy and confidently sign the right players for your team. It really is that easy. Loans are really good for your youth players, but please make sure to recall them at the start of a new season and not in the middle of one. The dynamic potential is so stupid that it'll think you've not been playing a player enough rather than realising 
that he wasn't available for selection due to being loaned out. It's total madness, but it won't stop people from really enjoying the Youth Academy because it's the best way of making your save unique. And that's what my career mode series, Youth Squad Legends, is all about. Every series, we have a unique story that creates memorable players we didn't know of at the beginning and that's a bit magical so please go and check it out a big thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me financially feel free to put any questions in the comment section my community is full of youth academy veterans that i'm sure are happy to help take care bye bye